Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget. Yeah. Hey, it's chilly. Actually, you know, I think I'm going to put on my hand warmers. I was just thinking about this before I launched our Sunday Morning Coffee on the video format. I, You know I do this on audio mostly, but sometimes I do it on video. I've been using video a lot more. So I got some hand warmers in here and I'm in the greenhouse. I'm in a room in my home that's separate from my house, but it's connected to my house. There's a big door to get in to the house from here and it's self heated and things, but you know, it's expensive to heat it. It's electric heat here in the greenhouse. So we try not to, you know, just not keep it too much above 60, but it's cold today, wind chill and stuff. So for those of you who don't know, I live in Minnesota. My name is Bridget. I'm actually an intuitive life coach and I'm known best for my work, I think as a psychic and a medium. And so I, why am I, I'm just pausing right now. I literally feel like, okay, so I'm getting some, um, it's January, 2022, when I'm recording this, and I'm getting some vibes. I'm going to be channeling after this. So if you're watching this on above life channel, YouTube, you know, that every week on Mondays, I share a new channeling video with afterlife celebrity guests, because it gives us insight about our lives. It encourages us to live our best lives, right? It gives us hope and understanding about life, different perspective, right? And so right now I'm recording this with you and then I'm gonna record a channeling session. So I'm a little, I can kind of feel into that right now a little bit. So, all right, so welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee. I actually drank my coffee already. I had my little joy mug. And so now I'm drinking water, which is fine because this is my Minnie Mouse water jug. And I'm missing Disney. You guys know it, right? Like I'm a Disney addict for sure. I need that magic infusion, you know, and it's January and it's cold and I, I would rather be in Florida right now. Um, so here we are, Sunday morning coffee. We're going to talk about the topic of the past. We're going to talk about the past. So we all have been through it haven't we? No matter where you are in the world, the last two years has been very unique. 2020, 2021, as we're stepping into a new year, it's natural to reflect back. And my best advice to you, my greatest wisdom is, if I can follow it myself, is to let the past be in the past. Mm -hmm. And I know it's really hard to do that. And there is a benefit for sure to reflection to information to honoring your journey as things start to come up for you from your past because your past will come up uh, you'll have memories sometimes hidden memories or new insights on old experiences based upon something you're that's happening right here right now in your life here and so if something is happening here and now that is connected in some way to a past pattern an energetic stream of consciousness it is natural to go and look at the past, get information from that, allow yourself the advantage of time and of maturity and of personal growth to be able to look back and reflect on that time and to get a new understanding then about maybe what's happening here and now. So the past is, is helpful for sure to give a perspective, a lens, right? But don't live there. Sometimes the reason why I feel like in our human bodies, we get so uncomfortable with ourselves and we redirect into other things like really focus or obsess about our body, for example, just one example, or really focus and obsess about money or really focus and obsess about our kid and what they should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing <laughs> kind of thing is because it's easier for us to take this energy of feeling unsettled and not having control, not being able to change things from the, our past, from our own experiences that we've lived. And so we do other things now, we misinterpret the energy stream from the past that's impacting us now. Did you hear that? We misinterpret the energy stream that is connected to our past and we're interpreting it and trying to use that energy now, here and now, in a way that's maybe feels more productive, like we have more 
control is the word that keeps coming up. Control, control, control. Like, I feel like we need to use that Janet Jackson song. I'm in control. <laughs> like that, seriously. Maybe if you journal about the topic of control and about understanding the past and how it's feeding into the need for control or the perception of how control can then help you keep your past in the past or keep your past at bay. Maybe if you're journaling about that, then you should put on that Janet Jackson control song. <laughs> just see, give yourself just that time of that song to just write about what that means to you. And it feels like to me that there's this, um, because we have a collective shared past right now with this, it's trauma. It is trauma. What we've been through, it, we have experienced a dramatic life-changing experience and cycle that is stretched out with all of the key factors and ingredients of trauma, with the unknowns, the uncertainty, the ups and downs, the, the misinformation, the, the being um, taken advantage of by other people, even like, like money fraud stuff for your uh, stimulus checks and and. Um, emotional stuff and abuse amplified because people are stuck in their homes and abusive relationships already. It gets worse. And then there's all this self-reflection time, like, who am I? What am I doing with my life? And then there's this massive pressure of our mortality. So let's just lay that right on top of there. And all of us are being crushed by this energy. And it's happening now because we're dealing with the energy of what we experienced early on in those early days of the pandemic. Because now we're in January and we're almost anticipating because it happened at the end of February, beginning of March, beginning of March, right? So it's like two months, we have about two months. And what happens is there's energetic imprints. And so as we get closer to the time when that switch was flipped and we all had to go inside, like figuratively inside and energetically inside and physically inside. Many people got isolated. Many people got overwhelmed. Many people got their, all of the relationships and the things about their lives that they leave their house for and they try to ignore and avoid were thrown in their face and they were sh shut in with that. And let's just be clear, nobody wants that by, you wanna be able to choose when you do your work. You wanna be able to choose when you're able to deal with or address issues like a relationship issue or a job issue. Like, do you really love your job or what are you doing? Or um, maybe it's political, maybe it's policy, maybe it's humanitarian stuff. I mean, it's all of these things. And, and you wanna be able to have those things come to you at a time when you're able to manage and have some room to work through those things to get yourself into the healing part of that and not just the traumatic pressure of all the pain. And instead we had like this major like sandwich of heavy, heavy, heavy. It's like layers upon concrete all on top of you, like pushing down all of us. And we're all trying to hold it up just to be like, okay, 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 okay. Like even as I'm talking to you about the past now, I'm feeling that I literally feel scrunched. Like I need to scrunch down. So to gain some feeling of independent power, I would encourage you to recognize this feeling or need of, to control things, like simple things like your environment. Why do you think that the Marie Kondo stuff and the like clearing your environment and cleansing and changing the minimalist stuff and the... Uh, um, and, and then the home renovations and people moving out of the city and into the suburbs and all that. Why do you think all that stuff started to happen? Because we want control over something. And the external environment is a reflection of what's happening inside. And so they both feed off each other. It's not one or the other, it's both ways. And so that control, the concept of control is a tool that the mind uses to get some semblance of order to give you a protection so that you don't get so overwhelmed that you're in a depression or your anxiety isn't raging. And for me, like, I feel like my anxiety hadn't been too high during, during the pandemic or anything. And now just recently in 2022, end of 2021 and 2022, now it's starting to like come up and I'm like, whoa. And do you know why 
I think this is, it's because we have had a past trauma that we've shared and we are grieving. And this is exactly two years was exactly when I, that's the distance for me personally from when my dad died until I finally was able to grieve until I finally had my psychic awakening experience. Do you remember that? Like it's on my, it's on my YouTube channels. I share my psychic story on above life channel. I share my psychic story on fairy grasshopper, but it was two years from the time my dad died till I had this like psychic or spiritual awakening. So if we are all in a grieving process, looking back at our past before the pandemic, pre-pandemic and feeling uh, the regrets of the things we used to be able to do so readily and easily that we took for granted. And now you just can't randomly do things like that. And how like customer service, we thought, we thought stuff was bad before and now it's really bad because everybody that's staffing places, there's such a shortage, teachers, the airlines, um, um, your stores, your restaurants, everything, such a shortage of staff because of everybody getting sick again now in a different way. Thank goodness it's different, but it's people are getting sick. And so it's impacting. And before this pandemic, people would complain about customer service. I did. I'd be like Ugh, frustrated. I'm like, I would never treat people like that. And can you just help me? I'm paying for the service. I expect a level of service back. And now it's like, psh, that's all out the window. Everybody needs to collectively be patient. And patience is not something that any of us wants. Let's just be honest. Either It's kind of like either you got it or you don't. I don't have it. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Patience is like the lefties. <laughs> so this energy about the past here is amplified because of the grief that we have in our reflection as to what we could have done differently. Before all this, we could have been in a different relationship so that we went into lockdown. We could have had somebody we actually liked to be with, or we could have had the kids set up to understand online learning, to be able to know how to learn online so that when we went into lockdown, online learning was no big deal for them. Or we could have already had virtual meetings and virtual offices and people could have been more telecommuting if companies and organizations wouldn't have been so against it. They could have been telecommuting long before this and it wouldn't have been that much of a disruption. And then people would have been happier in the first place. But now we've been forced into a change together, a massive change. And it's created trauma because it created an instant disconnect and then a need to understand. So the need for control, whatever we can, well, we can control what we ate for the most part. We could control... Um, I mean, for, for the most part, some people couldn't because some people were in a situation and kids, unfortunately, in a situation where they weren't getting their school lunches and that kind of thing. And some, for some people that's like devastating because they don't have food. There's like food scarcity in their home, you know, and service wise, like services, like public services. And it just, it, it just rocked us. And I feel like talking about the past, the place that we have the most power is in ourselves, in our heart, in our own hearts. If there's parts of you that you need to forgive, if there's dumb ass choices you've made in your lifetime, this is a great time to soften the edges of that, to get a little squishy with it, uncomfortable, yeah, but to love yourself through that healing process because if this is a big old bonfire in January, 2022, and it's time to clear stuff, let's throw the past in. The past with a purpose, the past that integrates and can be used as mulch that can be burned into ashes to go into the earth and support and sustain you in the future. Yes, integrate the information, integrate the healing, the lesson, the goodness, the goodness. You don't have to bear the scars and be like, this is who I am. Really? I would hope you've evolved a bit. Have you not? Oh, you haven't. Oh, then you wouldn't even be watching Sunday morning coffee with Bridget. You wouldn't be interested in spirituality, meditation, energy, um, 
any kind of spirituality stuff at all. You would just not be interested in this. You would not even be interested probably even in your health, let's be clear. So you've evolved, right? So the you of today can show up for the you of the past without needing to control the narrative or the story of the past because oftentimes the mind uses it, the ego mind uses it, overuses it, controls you through your emotions to keep you safe and protected. It limits you, not intending to hurt you. Your mind is not bad. Your ego is not bad. It's not bad, but it's for survival. And in times like this of trauma and tragedy and grief, we instinctively use the mind. The mind just steps right in and tries to take care of stuff. So what I'm trying to tell you is this is a choice time for you using your heart space to work with the feelings and the emotions of the past and, and, and random kind of experiences that pop up or bubble up from like high school or those early 20 days, 20s, the college days, or that time when you dated this person or that time when you really screwed up a job option opportunity, like you flaked out on the job that would have been great and helped you or you didn't show up for something that was important for somebody that is important to you or was important to you. And it wrecked your relationship, your friendship, et cetera. Right. Like you wish you could go back. Like you have like maybe some regrets about that, or you wish things could have been different. Well, stop wishing things could have been different and mourning over the past and the lost opportunity. Instead, step into the heart, let the past be present with you so that you can allow yourself to just integrate it instead of letting it be alive with energy, alive and pulling you back or showing up in your current patterns, because that's what it's doing. There's a stream of energy from the past that's feeding your current cycle. And you have the opportunity to step into your heart where that wheel is turning and work with the emotions and the energy of it. You can do this through a counselor, a therapist, a licensed clinical social worker, through some kind of a support group. If it's specific to like grief or the loss of someone, you can do it through your church organizations. You can do it through online groups and the topic area that you're dealing with. Maybe you're dealing with abusive relationships. Maybe you're dealing with um, uh, an eating disorder. Maybe you're dealing with some kind of an addiction, whatever it might be for you. And maybe it's just a pattern of feeling bad about yourself. Most of us have that. So maybe it's, it's getting, giving yourself the opportunity to deepen into some friendships where everyone is supporting each other. And maybe it's as simple as like a book club with positive books or books about stories of people who are resilient and who've overcome challenges or who have such a beautiful self-love and commitment to themselves, not just a self-help book, but a personal story that it can inspire you. Not about comparing, but inspiring. Maybe this will help you to just embrace the wholeness of who you are today. Yeah, because it's really not about other people forgiving you or other people judging you or deciding what your life means based upon your past string of choices, but it does give incredibly accurate information about how you're going to behave in the future going forward. And you know it. And I think that's why the past bothers you because you think, the past, past behavior is a predictor of future behavior. I mean, it is. People get into patterns and they have, you look back and you go, they did this and they did that, you know, or, or I did this and I did this. And when this happens, this is my go-to. And you know it. Like I know when this happens to me, these are my go-tos. <laughs> this is what I do. So if I start to see myself doing these things and they're not healthy things, I need to start going to my go-tos of my healthy things. And that's what healing is, a list of healthy things next to the crappy things that you usually use to numb yourself, avoid, distract yourself from the pain. That list that's instinctive needs to have a, contra, a, a, a counterbalanced list for the past when it comes up of healthy things you can do. I could do, I could use my oils and anoint myself. I could use my card decks. I could call a friend, phone a friend, phone a friend. I could download a new book. I could listen to a podcast. I could listen to some inspiring music. I could move my body, go for a walk, cuddle with my dog. I could do something different to change the mood energetic tie that's feeding into these old feelings or beliefs about myself until I'm ready to actually change the belief about myself. You got to be in a healthier state to do that, healthier place to do that. You got to be in the present, not living in the past, not letting the past 
determine your present and then thus your future. Deter the present determines the future. Therefore, the past should not be in the present. And if it's coming up as a pattern, it's information. Don't live it. Don't relive it. File it. Organize it. Burn it down, baby. Throw it in the bonfire and let it become ashes so that Mother Earth, Great Mother can take that energy and use it to support you as a strong, solid platform uh, and nurture the soil that's gonna grow you through today into the future, like that. That's how the past can serve you as ashes, the goods and the bads. It doesn't have to be your identity. You are not one thing, one activity, one experience, one relationship, one job, one college course, one car accident, one great award-winning book, or five really bad, crappy mistakes. You're the cumulative of the whole. The cumulative of your whole. So stop acting like you're chopped up into pieces because you're not. We've had a massive life-changing experience. We are still in an energy of trying to then coming up on this grieving point where we're going to look back at the past and have reflection. Reflection is natural. It is good. It can be healthy, but do not live there. Do not dwell on it. Do not dive into the pool of depression as to all the things you didn't do before that and that you're never going to be able to do again. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially if you've lived through the 9-11, right? Do you remember when we used to be able to just walk into the airport, bring grandma and grandpa to the airplane, give them all the hugs and send them on their way and watch their plane take off or be there to greet them at the gate when they get off the airplane, hugs and kisses and walking through the airport. Do you remember those days? Some of you are going to be way too young and not have a clue about that. I remember that. Mm-hmm. It's just different, it's different. Life is different, it changes and we adjust, but we do carry the trauma of the experience, the pain, the judgment, the horrors, the what ifs about the future. We carry these things and it's natural, survival, ego-minded instinct to control the never again, right? How about we just step into this as the just is? This just is. This just is what it is. And you have a great opportunity in your heart to work with some of this energy from the past to support you, to love you. A greater opportunity to love yourself, to practice self-acceptance, to practice all of these healthy habits and traits and introduce new healthy habits, new thoughts that are happy and, and healthy and positive for you. Positive with potential, not positive to cover up something bad, not fake positive, but really hopeful. And I hope that I can help you do that in this new year. I'd love to be able to work with you. I really would. Check out some of my current service offerings on Bridget Inspired on Facebook. I just announced my intuitive women's group. Take a look at it. It's not just for women. It's for those who identify with the divine feminine energies and those who identify as women. So I hope I've inspired your spirit today, filled you with some hope, encouraged you to live your life, your best life. Now, today. Ugh, sending you so much love. I look forward to working with you in the new year. Thanks for being here.